we need that now more than ever. Oh, glory. And you can hear the cry of sinful men all over the place. You don't have to take a plane and fly to any remote part of the earth if there's any such now to see distress, to hear, see pain and suffering. Everywhere we turn, somebody's crying out, needs Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. I challenge you to watch in all of these and be sober. And... I was preaching the other day and I made the statement. I said, these days it's not difficult to, to get a message to preach. And let me explain. The situations around us, the social issues, the crime, the violence, the decay of society, the moral declension everywhere you turn, the falling down of family life, amen, the apathy among people. You can just look on social issues and begin to preach social issues. You can just pick up the morning's paper, read the headline, and you have a message. You can just walk along the street and listen to people, and you can glean a message. But that's not the message that God wants us to carry. You must have a message from the heart of God. You must have a message that comes from God, amen, and give to God's people in a way that they know that God is calling them to reckoning. How can they hear without such a preacher? And how can such a one preach except he be sent? We need more messages from the word of God. We have enough social commentators. Oh, yeah, we do. We have enough philanthropical people doing all kind of deeds and talking about them. We have all of those things going on. We need, oh glory to God, to preach thus saith the Lord. What did God tell Jonah when he sent him to preach? He said, preach the preaching that I bid you. Preach the preaching that I bid you. Tell them what I tell you to tell them. Because my word shall not return unto me void. Somebody lift your hand and say, help us, Lord. Preach God's word. Gentlemen, preach clearly so that people can understand what you're saying. Paul says, you know, I could say a lot of things. Paul says, I could come to you with excellency of speech. I could come to you speaking Greek and Latin and all the languages of his time. As one of the brightest mind of his day, third brightest mind, it was, say, it was said that he was. He said, I could come to you in that cloak, in that manner. But I came not to you with enticing words of man's wisdom. But I come to you in the demonstration of the spirit and power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. We have become too caught up these days with some of the personalities in our pulpit who do not say what thus said the Lord. But lots of long or short stories from long fellas that doesn't take us anywhere. Preach the preaching that I bid you. For the time will come when men will not endure. Say it somebody. This is the age and time in which we live. People are turning their back on the sound gospel. Because the sound gospel calls for separation. The sound gospel is a holiness gospel. The sound, amen, the sound gospel is any man be in Christ is a new creature. All things are passed away and behold, all things become new. The sound gospel is come out from among them. You are not too popular preaching like this in this age and time, but you're not in this thing for popularity. You're in this thing to please God. Oh, I feel I want to preach a little. I'm coming down. You're in this thing to please God. You're not in this thing to please the congregants that you lead. I lead a large congregation. And 
I said to them, if God had sent me to please you, I would be a messed up man. Because everyone sees things differently. Oh, can I talk to somebody here? For him this to please the master. He is the one and the only one who can say to you when the end comes, come ye blessed of my father. Preach the gospel. Preach clearly so that they understand. Preach in love that they will follow. Preach in love. You know, Jesus demonstrated in no uncertain way what it means to be compassionate. What it means to be empathetic. What it means to be touched with the feeling of people's infirmities. And this is the reason why he said, I'm going to give my people, my church, pastors according to my own heart. I'm going to make sure I fit the heart in them that they'll represent me well. And if you stick by him, you will represent him well. Somebody praise God with me. Let me close. I charge you and I challenge you to keep your personal character blameless. You know, reputation versus character. What's your choice? What would you prioritize? Reputation versus character. Reputation is what people think of us, what they know of us. But character is deep down that God knows who we really are. Any old junk can build himself a reputation. We have a, some leaders in this nation who have built themselves tremendous reputation. Oh, yeah. That's charismatic leaders. And some of them have five wives still alive. Excuse me, please. I'm not in power of faith. I'm sorry. No character. No character. Oh, glory. No character to back them standing before God in the pulpit. Oh, hallelujah. But the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart must be acceptable in the sight of God when no one sees you in your private corner. God must be able to say, well done, my child. Well done. Because you see, Doc, I believe sometimes people are caught up with the public march. The public march. But you know, I treasure private drills more than public march. Because if you do not train in private, ask the security forces, all of those men that fly over the world as bombers and all kind of stuff, they have to be trained in private. The public march is after you have done your private drills. Hallelujah. And I've oftentimes said one of the great allergies that the church needs and seem to become lacking in more than ever is knee allergy. Run after theology. And everybody becomes theologian. But we are the knee allergists. We are the knee allergists on the choir. We are the neologists. Amen. In the pulpit. We are the neologists in the pew. We must spend time on our knees before God. Because he who kneels low before God has no problem to stand tall before men. He who kneels low before God and bending knees, he has no problem to stand tall before men. God Almighty. Five minutes and a close. That's my guide over there. Hallelujah. Somebody give him a praise down there. So, preach the truth. Preach, preach it clearly. Preach it in love. And I charge you that you should also live the truth. Do not just preach it. But live it. A man must live it before him. Preach it. Hallelujah. Live the truth. 
be a true representative of the truth. Live it, my brothers and sisters. Oh, glory to God. Keep your personal character blameless before God. Spend time in his presence. Hallelujah. Kneel on your knees before him and say, search me, O oh God. Pastors should do that. Bishops should do that. Search me, O oh God. Know my heart, I pray. Try me, dear Savior. Know my thoughts, I pray. See if there be wicked ways in me. Cleanse me from every sin and set me free. You mean we need to do that also? Oh no! It's the little members in the church how to do that. We are the first to set that example. Jesus. Bishop Maxwell, the Lord, the Lord led me to do a special series of prayer meetings that's going on now in the church. We had two such on a Friday night. No music, no camera, no nothing at all. Just pure beer people come before God, locked down before him. I tell you this, but this will scare you. No lights in the church. The verse of scripture that says, God dwell in a thick darkness. God said, bring my people before me. No distraction. No light, no music, no camera, nothing at all. And we lay before the Lord, sir, I have seen and we have felt a wave of the Holy Spirit came into those prayer meetings. We almost feel scared at times. The awesomeness of God's presence as we spend time before him. Let me close. Glory to God. Gentlemen, be a servant and not a master. Jesus says, I'm, I am come to serve. Not to be served. Be a servant of God, a servant to God's people. And bear in mind also that persuasion is more effective than force persuasion. Much more effective than force. Let people become persuaded that you are truly sold out for God. And you don't want to have to fight them to do anything. You don't want to coerce them into anything. Your life persuade them. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So be an example. Keep yourself from ministry jealousy. And I really mean I'm closing now. Keep yourself from ministry jealousy. Some people do not play by any rules at all. They are dirty fighters. Like Mike Tyson. They will bite off ears and bite off other things if they get a chance. Oh, you're not saying nothing. Dirty fighters! Dirty fighters. In church! In church! Play by the rules! If a man strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. Strive lawfully. There's always room at the top without pushing anyone aside. There's room at the top without trampling on anybody. There's room at the top without pulling down anybody. There's room at the top without assassinating anybody's character. There's room at the top without setting up any derricks in anybody's way. There's room at the top without setting up a coup, 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 spiritual coup d'etat. Hey, somebody shout and let me stop. Shakunda masata, rabo kosete, rumamanda sete, strive lawfully. When God blessed you, you are blessed. When God lifts you up, you are lifted. Promotion comes not from the east. It don't come from the west. It comes from God. A 
And he knows where to find you. He knows where to find you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Please remember. Please remember. That is not your church. It's God's church. That's your church. It's God's church. Listen. You could, we could plant as much as we want to plant. We could water drying every well around here to water. If God, if God, if God do not give the increase, our planting in this is in vain. Our watering is in vain. It is God's church. Take care of the church of God. Take heed to yourself. And the church over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseer, made you bishop to feed the church of God. No matter how exemplary your ministry, oh Lord, no matter how much you are lorded by people, no matter how much accolade it lay on you, remember it is God's church. Oh God. Somebody just lift your hand and wave them. Just wave them in his presence. Wave them in his presence. And I, I stop with this. I stop at this. All our gifts, all our talents, all our, our abilities, for ministry, etc., they come from God. They come from God. They come from God. Honor Him. They are not ours. They are divine deposits that have been made in our lives. And when you make a deposit into the bank, most time you look for some interest. So, gentlemen, divine deposits have been made. Let the master get something to let him feel good. Don't let him say, take away what this worthless man have and give it to man that have five. No, please. Don't bury it. Use it for the glory of God. Watch and be sober. Watch for the preacher killers. And I wouldn't stop, finish without I throw this in. Watch out for the preacher killers. There are some things that are real preacher killers. Oh, yeah. Preacher killers. Women. Women are wonderful people. They're attractive people. They are beautiful people. Nice to be with. But dear God, if you take up a live coal in your bosom that doesn't belong there, oh, God of heaven, you are going to get Preacher killers, women, pride, money, women, pride, money, money, pride, women. No offense to you, wonderful Christian ladies. Watch out for preacher killers. Yeah, man, it's attractive to be behind pulpits, you know. And we're in color and we're in this and preaching and people. Oh, God. Lord, I can't say this. Oh, no. Jesus Christ. Oh. Oh, no. Be careful. Be careful of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. They are not of the Father. They are of the world. And the world and its lust shall soon pass away. But he who does the will of God shall abide forever. May the Lord bless you. May he cause his face to shine bright upon you. And may he ever lift up the light of his glorious countenance upon you. 
And may your path be marked with peace and success every step of the way. Bow your heads with me, please. Thank you, Lord, for these words said. I pray that they will find hearts in your people here, now, whenever, and wherever, as I commit them all to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. My God, can we stand all over this hall and just lift your hands and give God a thunderous praise? God the thunder was praised. Oh my God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. May be seated. My heart is challenged this afternoon. Is your heart? Is your heart challenged this afternoon? My heart is challenged by these words. The Lord bless you, Dr. Davis. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Gentlemen, is your heart challenged by these words? Time is going from us, and at this time, I invite our general overseer, Bishop Dr. Donald Maxwell, receive him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah is the praise. Come on, let me hear those hallelujahs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Oh, this is lovely. This is lovely. I praise God tonight for Dr. Bishop Davis, thank you, sir. Amen. He's always be a blessing to him. Every time I hear this man of God, he blesses me. And I thank God tonight that you three men have received such a charge. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. May God strengthen you. Amen. As we move. Trusting in the guidance of the Holy Spirit, these three reverends have been chosen to be ordained to the office of a bishop. I will therefore lay hands upon them and in the power of the Holy Spirit consecrate them a bishop in the one holy Catholic Apostolic Church. All stand, please. Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, you have heard testimony given that these reverends have been duly selected to be a bishop of the Church of God to serve in the Pentecostal City Mission Church. You have been assured of their suitability and that the church has approved them for this sacred responsibility. Nevertheless, if any of you know any reason why we should not proceed, let it be now be made known. Amen. Is it your will that Reverend Orville Deacon, Reverend David Johnson, Reverend 
Dervin Taylor be attained to the office of a bishop? Will you uphold Reverend Arville Deacon, Reverend David Johnson, Reverend Durban Taylor as bishops and follow them as they follow our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who is the chief shepherd of the church? Congregation, please be seated. My brothers, the people have affirmed their trust in you by acclaiming your selection. A bishop in God's holy church is called to be one with the apostles in proclaiming Christ's resurrection and interpreting the gospel and to testify to Christ's sovereignty as Lord of Lords and king of kings you are called to guard the faith unity and discipline of the church to celebrate and to provide for the administration of the sacraments of the new covenant to ordain ministers and to join in ordaining bishops and to be in all things a faithful pastor and hold some example for the entire flock of Christ. With your fellow bishops, you will share in the leadership of the church throughout the world. Your heritage is the faith of patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs and those of every generation who have looked to God in hope. Your joy will be to follow him who came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Are you persuaded that God has called you to the office of a bishop? Will you accept this call and fulfill his trust in obedience to Christ? Will you be faithful in prayer and in the study of the Holy Scripture that you may have the mind of Christ? Will you boldly proclaim and interpret the gospel of Christ, enlightening the minds and stirring up the conscience of your people? As a bishop and pastor, you will, encor will you encourage and support all baptized people in their gifts and ministries? Nourish them from the riches of God's grace. Pray for them without ceasing and celebrate with them the sacrament of our redemption. Will you guard the faith, unity, and discipline of the church? Will you share with your fellow bishops in the government of the whole church? Will you sustain your fellowship? Will you sustain your fellowship presbyters and your fellow presbyters and take counsel with them? Will you guide and strengthen the deacons and all others who minister in the church? Will you be merciful to all, show compassion to the poor and strangers, and defend those who have no helper? Through these promises, you have committed yourselves to God to serve his church in the office of bishop. We therefore call upon you chosen to be 
a guardian of the church's faith to lead us in confessing that faith. Amen. And we will, all the candidates and congregation will repeat this. It's in your book at the bottom. We believe in one God, the, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. At this time, we will. We will ask the candidates to kneel. Praise God. Father and our God, 
how we honor you this evening king of kings lord of lords you are the creator of all things and these men you have chosen tonight to take this ministry forward i pray god that you will stretch your hand upon them tonight and anoint them consecrate them father fill them afresh with the fire of god the holy ghost i pray god they will not make it unless you touch them they will not be able to stand unless you stand in them and master i call on you tonight to keep your hand on them i pray that you'll pass them through the water and through the blood i pray god for you declaring your word that those who are planted by the rivers of water will bring forth fruit in their seasons their leaves shall not wither and whatsoever they do it shall prosper almighty god touch them tonight in a very special way touch their wives touch their children touch their church that they're pastoring touch everything that they put their hands to and god allow them to know that you are their master you are their leader you lead them you speak to them you direct them and whatever you say god it must be done and so right now i lay hand upon reverend johnson consecrate him in the name of the father in the name of the son in the name of the holy ghost i lay hand on his wife lord god that she'll stand beside him lord god for they have become one she'll be his helper and god you will lead her into a higher standing with you i claim deliverance over this family in the name of jesus almighty god i lay hand on reverend durban taylor and i ask god a young man you have called as a timothy almighty god i know he's not afraid i know he's not timid but in the name of jesus release new anointing release into his life release your power upon his family release god upon the church that he's leading that they will recognize god that he is your servant and not theirs almighty god in the name of jesus paralyze this young man lift him up god hallelujah to another level in you you're calling him to come up higher higher in the name of jesus and so i lay hand and consecrate him in the name of the father in the name of the son and in the name of the holy ghost in the name of jesus almighty god lay your hand upon the reverend deacon lord we thank you for this man of god i pray that tonight lord open his eyes to see the deep things of god almighty god in the name of Jesus, Atakata, Oriama, oh, Hallelujah. I lay a hand on him tonight, Lord, and I anoint him in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Bless his dear wife, bless his family. Touch them on tonight. And God, this whole procedure, I take authority in your name over the powers of darkness god almighty put angels on their path but you promise in your word you'll give your angels charge over them to keep them in all their ways and may they in all their ways acknowledge you and you promise you'll direct their path spirit of the living god flow through them oh you said they that believe on you out of their belly would flow rivers of living water let living water spring up lord god allow them to be a spring of living water to water your people to encourage your people and to lead them to victory that when you shall come back bursting the clouds of heaven the people will be made ready because of these lives that they've seen walking in your will and in your way have your way right now father we say thanks 
in Jesus name in Jesus name Statement to you, they are going to be robed. Amen. Their wives will robe their husbands. So give God praise, church of God. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. God praise.
going to ask the new bishops to come up on the form. Your wives, come with your husband. Stand with your husband on the form, please. organization we have ordained three men as bishops three at one time as bishops and I want I want our people to know something as God spoke to my heart and I heard the story not very long ago that I don't like women it's a lie from the pit of hell. My mother is a woman. I married a woman for 53 years. Amen. I was converted under a woman. And so I follow God. What God said. Earlier the Lord spoke to my heart. He said, the women are my helpers. And they have been dragging the load for many years. When will the men step up to the responsibility of recognizing who God and what God called them for? And I obeyed God. It was a selection of more men. Others declined. But I leave it the way it is because I know God spoke to me. Amen. And tonight, it is with great honor that I present to the Pentecostal City Mission, Reverend Orville Deacon, Reverend Durbin Taylor, and Reverend Johnson as bishops in this organization. Worldwide, they be recognized as bishops. In the name of the Father, 
in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Ghost receive them they are your bishops amen 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 My soul do magnify the Lord. And I give God praise. And I give God thanks. And I can lift my hands and say, It is of the Lord's mercy that I am not destroyed. His compassion faileth not. And His mercy be on you every day. I promise by the help of God to remain humble and to live for God and to present my body as a living sacrifice and know that I am a servant and servant must serve with dignity, with pride and with humility. God bless you. Pray for me. I need your prayer. And I have the support of a lovely wife that will back me 24 in ministry. God bless you. Walk good. Let's pray one for another. To God be the glory. Great teacher. Somebody give him three healthy praise. Three healthy praise around here. God is good. God is great. Excellent Jesus. To the work, to the work. We are servant of God. God bless you. Pray for me as I pray for you. As I serve with dignity and pride. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I will go for I have learned to trust in so his divine will sweet. sign up for this but where he may lead me I will go I'm going without a murmur with confidence that his footsteps will follow me still hallelujah 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 
on the behalf of my wife and son and my family and the Joshua generation, the young people who I lead. Hallelujah. 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 I want to say how much I appreciate you. I want to also say with God as my guide, I will not let God down. Too many dangers. As young as I look, toils and sneers. I have already come. It is grace that has brought me this far. I won't let anybody despise my youth. Grace will lead me home. The Lord bless you. I'm humbled in Jesus' name. I promise to serve you and serve you well. Hallelujah. My Jesus, I have promised to serve thee till the end. Be thou forever near me. My master, my master, and my friend. I am weak, but thou art strong. Your strength is made perfect in my weakness. To God be the glory, great things he had done. So loved he this world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life an atonement for sin and opened the life gate that all may come in. Praise God! Praise God! Praise God! Isaiah said he saw the Lord and he was high and lifted up. His trail it filled the temple. Isaiah then saw how broken he was. He saw how holy God was. So tonight I depend on God. I, I, I follow God and I can't make it without Jesus Christ. And I thank God for my wife. I thank God for my family. And I thank God for all those who have prayed for me. I cannot and could not have made it without you. And the work has just started. But the same God, the same God, the same God, Elijah's God Daniel's God glory be to almighty God you just pray for me in Jesus name and I'll serve you with every strength I have in my body by the grace of God almighty and I thank you I thank you
the bishop. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands so you can do better than that. Amen. We have another service we are going straight into. So I know afterward all the meeting and the greeting can take place after word. Amen. I believe that the Lord has another word, amen, for us. I think, amen, I was wondering if they could come up higher. Come up higher. Bishops, bishops, hello, yes. Mm-hmm. Do you know this chorus, young people? I know you don't know this song. Something down inside of me Telling me to go on Oh, something down inside of me Oh, telling me to go on Oh, something down inside of me Telling me to go on Go on, go on, go on Church of God, you still can do better than that. My God, my God. Whoa, I know God is up to something tonight. Lord, have mercy. Woo. But I must bring the moderator. The moderator, the moderator. The moderator, Reverend Gloria Carter. Put your hands together. Make her welcome. Mm -hmm. This kind God, oh, I never seen your kind. This kind God, oh, oh. 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 Be your only name. Somebody said this kind God. Oh.
<laughs> I never see anybody sit down and dance. <laughs> so if you are sitting, let us change our position. General Overseer Dr. Donald Maxwell, Bishop Marcia Gale, Deputy General Overseer, all of the bishops who are viewing from wherever they are at this time, I bring you greetings to our newly, my aunt, I stood here and the tears were just coming down. The tears of joy and victory. Tears of joy and victory. To God be the glory. I greet you well, new bishops. And we know that we will be praying for you and with you and we'll be working with you to all other ministers in your respective place. Be 
Bishop Drake, when I saw her walked in this morning, I felt the joy, because I've been asking about her since Friday when I came in, finding out what was happening, but to God be the glory, she is here. As we are intruding down, we are going to be singing, standing together, standing together, and although we just came out of ordination service, we're still going to be singing the welcome song two times. Hallelujah. We bless your name. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Blessed Holy Ghost, we welcome you. Come with power and fill
At this time, I'm going to call on Light Brigade Hurlington to come and take us through to the throne of grace. To look up on his face. There is he forever. As we come to you tonight, one more time in your presence. Father, we understand that in your presence, there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, Lord, we recognize that there are pleasures forevermore. We come tonight expecting more. You have been doing great. And so, Father, we open up our spirit to you tonight for another word. A word in such a time as this, Lord, as you called us to fan the flame. And so I pray tonight for a purpose. My purposeful word in our spirit today, Lord, let your will be done. We come against every plan and every will of the dragon. We come, God, tonight to give you worship. We come to just give all to you tonight. And so whatever you are planning on doing, God, please not X me out. Just add me into it and let your word go forth tonight. Have your sweet way in this auditorium. Let the Holy Spirit, my God, lead and direct us have your divine way now as we say spirit of the living God intervene and do extraordinary do your thing let your will be done in Jesus mighty name somebody say amen, amen. hallelujah glory to God God bless you like we did early time we're going to turn our Bibles to second going to be reading our convention scripture. Second Timothy chapter 1, reading from verse 1 to 7. We stand and if you have your Bibles, you open your Bibles and we're going to read together. Final night of our convocation and so it's only fitting that we read together the words of God. Is that an Amen. You find it, say amen. amen. We begin together. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dearly beloved, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefather with poor conscience, that without ceasing, I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of my tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfringed faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois, and Mother Eunice, and I am Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We're going to read the verse two more times. God not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of the sound mind. For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of the sound mind. Amen. The words of the Lord, we honor them together by saying, Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it's now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Burning fire. It's burning in my soul. Burning fire. It's burning in my soul. Burning in the morning. Burning in the evening. Burning. Burning fire is burning in my soul.
you know this chorus? Oh, there's more than a number that can let the fire burn some more. So we're going to sing that about three more times. After uh, we sing it three more times, I will be inviting Bishop Art to come and bring greetings to this convention. Hallelujah. Burn in fire, he's burning. I want to greet our general overseer, Bishop Donald Maxwell, Reverend Barbara Maxwell. I greet Bishop Gale. Good to see you, Bishop Drake. Inquire of you. Never see you on Friday night, but I see you today. It's good to see you in the place. Put your hands together for Bishop Drake. I greet Bishop Dervon Taylor. Bishop Paul Peter, Bishop David Johnson. I am the first to bring greeting to them in the public. And I want to thank God for that. Greeting Bishop Gay. To the household of faith, it is good to be here. To be enjoying the presence of the Lord. I was here on Friday night and I enjoyed the word. I just want to say to us tonight that convention themes are not a slam, should not be treated as a slam. I believe that what Paul was doing to Timothy was instilling something in him that would be personal, that would help him to go through. And as we look tonight and see how Paul admired and admonished Timothy, had it not been for the pause that God placed in our lives, we would not be here tonight. And all the pause in our life admonishes us. Some of them are not on the scene tonight, but thank God they saw in us something. And I just see how Paul said, when I look in you, Timothy, I see a faith. Not so much the Christian faith, but what was in Timothy that he possesses within the Christian faith. The Lord bless you tonight. I love you, and I'm happy to be here. Always happy to be here. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Bishop Art. God bless you. God bless you. Lift your hands above your head and worship God. We can still do better than that. Make certain while you're going to leave out of here tonight, you are going home with something that will continue to stir your spirit. Lift your hands above your head and give God glory. Hallelujah. At this time, I'm going to ask Lighty 
Thomas out of Portland to come and bring greetings. Lighty Thomas. I wish somebody's soul would uh, catch a fire. Catch a fire. Catch a fire. I wish somebody's soul would uh, catch a fire. I put them with the Holy Ghost. Come on, give him a praise. Are you in convention? Lift your voice and give him a praise. Somebody got to praise him. Come on and lift your voice and give him a praise. Come on, shout a praise. Come on, lift those voice. Shut those feet and give him a praise. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. The flame is burning. Let me greet our general overseer, Bishop Dr. Donald Maxwell, and my spiritual mother, Bishop Marcy again. I get saved her under her ministry when she was a worker. She's my mother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bishop Jakes. 
Bishop Derval, Reverend Arvin Deacon. <laughs> Bishop, excuse me, Arvin Deacon, Reverend Bishop Davis. Hallelujah. We just give God praise. Give you greetings from Toronto, Canada. Hallelujah. As we under the steam fanning the flame, there was a man in the Bible named Jeremiah. And once his flame go out a bit, and he decided to sit on the flame. And while he's sitting on the flame, hallelujah, somebody got to give God a praise. Uh, Jeremiah said, I feel like a fire. We cannot sit on fire. Oh, God Almighty. If you have the fire, you got to have a praise. Somebody got to stand up on your feet and give them a praise. If you have the fire, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Are we convention? Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah! God bless you. I'm Reverend Hibbert from out of Toronto. Many of us know me in the prior line in the pandemic. Bishop, keep my flame burning. God bless you. Keep sweet. God bless you, Reverend Hibbert. We're going to be doing that song again. I'm going to be handing back to Bishop. But before we do that song, Ref, just say you can't sit on fire. And I don't know if we are tired, but it shouldn't that we are sitting on fire. I remember in the 80s in the schoolroom in Glengore, when the Holy Ghost fire was all over, when the Holy Ghost was moving and the Holy Ghost was turning in the schoolroom. And we start calling out for fire, fire, fire. fire and he was coming towards the schoolroom to hold the fire but when he got there he realized that it was the Holy Ghost fire I wish somebody's soul could have it's a fire Some people have to travel back to Westmoreland. Yes, St. James. And we want them to get a word tonight. Another word. <laughs> Before they leave this house. Let me just acknowledge the presence of Reverend Odeen Hemmings. Are you in the house, Reverend Hemmings? From the Grace Christian Ministries. Runaway Bay. Yes, I guess he was here. Amen. Reverend um, Kevon Brown, amen. Uh, 
from Kingdom Word and Power Liberation Church. <laughs> bless you, bless you, bless you, Reverend Tevon. Amen. And uh, uh, I think that's it. Uncurred Santif Sanctuary that is in Linstead. Uncurred Sanctuary. If you are here, just wave your hand. Anchored Sanctuary, amen. Linstead, amen, somewhere about. Um, the office sent me something that someone bought an olivai um, and received the wrong change. That person you are asked to go back to the office, amen, so they can give you a right change. You bought an olivai, you got the wrong change. Please go to the office so they can give you the right change. Amen. God bless you, Reverend Deacon. Could you come with the night's announcement and acknowledgement? And then while Reverend Deacon is doing that, I will be doing that. Uh, I know you came to convention with a certain amount of money in your pocket. Yes, and you have given out of it today. I am demanding what is left. Amen. All of what is left, I am demanding it tonight. God bless. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Tonight we thank God for the last night of the feast. We have indeed been richly blessed over the few days right here at the headquarters church. Please listen to the following announcement. We continue to remind you that tomorrow at 9 a.m. will be the all, all ordained ministers meeting at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Please ensure that you are there. Also, the Sixth Prayer Conference of the Jamaica region will be held on Saturday, August 27th and Sunday, August 28th, right here at the Headquarters Church. Registration fee of $1,000. There is a call for all the prayer ministries within the churches to please make the effort to be at this prayer conference as we seek God's direct guidance as we head into another church here. Toronto Youth Convention. We are being invited to support that on September 2 to 4, 2022. Again, you can make contact with Reverend Faith Scarlett or Sister Amanda Wade or any of those that are here tonight. Uh, Reverend Hebert just spoke. You can contact him for further details on those arrangements. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Today, we welcomed everyone extensively, and we are happy that you returned to the house tonight. Put your hands together and applaud yourselves. Bless the name of the Lord. However, we must indeed acknowledge our general overseer, Dr. Donald Maxwell, and his wife, Reverend Dr. Barbara Taylor. Appreciate them, bless the name of the Lord. They have been with us Thursday day and night, Friday day and night, and today they have been doing all the turns, and we are glad. Applaud them, applaud them, let them feel the love as they head back. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. We are glad, of course, to have Bishop Drake in our midst, the veteran tonight again. Nothing could have stopped her. It stopped her Thursday and Friday, but she says, Sunday, can miss Amen. me. Put your hands together for Bishop Udali Drake. We have our Deputy General Overseer and Regional Overseer for Jamaica and the Chairman of the Convention Committee, Bishop Marcia Gale, we continue to praise God for the woman of God. And of course, 
for the first time in our 84th Holy Convocation in this afternoon's session, showing up tonight to grace us with their presence is none other than our newly elected bishops, Bishop David Johnson, Bishop Arvel Deacon, Bishop Darvon Taylor. We are a part of history of love. in the history of the Pentecostal City Mission Church. Show them some love as we pledge earlier to give them our support as they strengthen the hands of their individual regional bishops and the general overseer in extending the work of God. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. To all the other ministers in their respective places, we thank God for you, for the visiting churches, the visiting pastors. We might not have received your names, but we know you are here. And we are glad that you chose to worship with the Pentecostal City Mission. We love you and we appreciate your presence. The community members, friends, the unsaved, the backsliders who traveled on the buses and the cars with the believers from the various outstations, thank God for you. We appreciate you. Bless the name of the Lord. And as I go, I must use this opportunity to say thank you. Because after the speaker speak tonight and the altar call, I won't be able to say that thanks. So thank you, Bishop Dr. Donald Maxwell, Bishop Marcia Gale, Reverend Barrington Richards, Council of Bishops, and Convocation Planning Committee, we all greatly appreciate your assistance for our 84th Annual International Holy Convocation. We want you to know how important your commitment is to the overall success of this convocation. We are grateful for your prayers, your generous donations, and you will continue to give the investment of your time and whatever way you contributed. Without you, this convocation would not be a success. We greatly appreciate your support and willingness to give. Please accept our heartfelt thanks. I would also like to take the time out to recognize the members of the Convocation Planning Committee who sat days and night working together to pull this event off. And we thank God that God has showed up in spite of the obstacles and we can glorify God today and the rest of the days was an awesome day in the house of the Lord. Let me hear the church say praise the Lord. We thank our chairperson, Bishop Marcia Gale from Jamaica, her assistant chair, Reverend Georgette Gavin, New York, secretaries, Reverend Hyacinth Law, England, yours truly, Reverend Monica Deacon, convocation book preparations, Light Brigade, Loris Taylor, New York, transportation, parking, and security, Brother Garfield Parks, Jamaica, financial and talk shop, Reverend Lyndon Handy, and Reverend Faith Scarlett. Venue of Food and Nutrition, Reverend Delrose Hart, Bishop Marcia Gale, Sister Cynthia Gillings, Music, Choir, Sound, and Engineering, Sister Andrea Maxwell, Brother Rory Brown, Usher, Brother Adrian Wade, Health, Reverend Delrose Hart, Light Brigade Carmen Robinson, Reverend Dr. Joan Williamson, Reverend Kathy Pierce, Reverend Leroy Douglas, Deaconess Hyacinth Wilson, Deaconess Carol McDonald Black. The tech team, Reverend Georgette Gavin, Brother Ryan Wilson, Light Brigade Dr. Brighton Kinlock, and Brother Andrew Tom Thompson, uh, Dwayne Thompson, and all the supporting teams that worked along with them. God bless you, and as you have been stirred, go back to your home churches and keep the fire burning. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend 
Monica, thank you. And all the delegation, overseas delegates that are in the house, just stand where you are. Just stand right where you are. All the overseas delegates, just stand. They don't know that they're a delegate. You know? They're not from overseas. Come on, put your hands together for them, people of God. Put your hands together for them. Amen, amen. God bless you all. God bless you. You could have stayed home. Amen. You could have stayed home. And as I said today, Brother Rory, uh, Reverend Christopher Dice sent his love. You know, he said he joined in and playing his guitar while you guys are playing. Amen. I love that. I love that. Amen. So I need a bucket. Quick. Hear me. I have a thousand dollar leave from out of what I came to convention to spend. Anybody else have that leave? Yes, is that I have leave. So if anybody else have that leave, just, just bring it quickly. We don't even want to sing because there is a presentation that needs to be done. And uh, the choir, what a beautiful choir. Oh man, come, 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 come. Rise up on, yes, somebody else up here have a thousand dollars, right? Yes. Boy, I don't want this choir every year here. Yes, it's a giving choir. My God, I've never seen a choir give so much in convention. Amen, all over the years. It's a giving choir. Yes. You have to share them, make them feel good, no man. I know only 50 yards. So give me all of them. Give me, give me, give me, give me. Yes. Giving, giving. Yes. Oh. Woo. And in the meantime, just to let you know that brother Hugh Fraser is in the hospital. That's brother Paul, as we know him. Yes. And we are asked to pray for him. Thank you. We are asked to pray for him. Yes. Um, if you notice, you haven't seen Reverend Handy in this con convention also. He's not feeling well, and uh, let us pray for him also. Amen? Let us, that's, you can't say that, Bishop, give me all of what he has. <laughs> bishop, bishop, empty his pocket, amen. Amen, amen, and if the bishop can't empty his pocket, why you can't? Come on, come on, man. Amen. There are some people under the tent. There are some people under the tent that have something leave. You see, if you go home with it, your conscience, conscience. Hear what Timothy said, pure conscience. Amen, amen. Can't go home with it. Should not go home with it. Amen. Mm. My God, one at a time we're wondering if we put off the convention. Oh my God, Sister Marjorie, I knew that. Should I tell you, did you know, but see with you tonight, amen. Thank you, First International Lady that, you know, First International Lady that, amen. Come here, deacon man, you just come today? You did give this morning? Oh, amen, amen, amen. Hi, little one, thank you. A mother bed word that you know, mother bed word. Yes, mother bed word. Thank you, thank you very much. Amen, 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 amen. Come before your conscience, brother. You come, 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 come. You want to leave the convention with a pure conscience, pure conscience, pure conscience. Nothing to bother your mind, nothing to trouble your mind. Amen. Yes, yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, man, some conscience are prick. Come now, man. Come, come, come. Hey, how you doing? Blessing. My God, my God. And a fully bucket full in, I press it one, press down. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. And a fully full, wait there, and a fully full. See? Hallelujah. Take them up, baby. Take them up. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes.
girl to get out of the bench. Jeez, but if you have the thousand dollar, just raise your hand and I send somebody for it. Just hold up the thousand dollar and I send somebody for it. <laughs> I believe that the, the new bishop them should give more. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ushers can you quickly collect the rest of the offering for us to have about um, three minutes to do that. Come, come, Sister Alvaro. Come. Yeah, man. Yes. Lord, I want to thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for your mercy. Lord, at this church hand, Lord, I pray, God, you may increase it, Lord. I pray, God, whatever to do is spend for the better man of your kingdom. Bless it right now in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Ghost. This offering is sealed and signed. Sealed and signed by the Father. Sealed and signed by the Son. Sealed and signed by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. I tell you, man. can still come in here. Amen, amen. Amen. While they are still collecting the offering, I, um, the offering, the rest of the offering, yes, I, I 
I'm going to ask our Christian International Christian Education Director, the principal of the Pentecostal City Mission Bible Institute, Reverend Dr. Stephen Strong, to come at this time and make a presentation. opportunity to just stand and acknowledge uh, the great things that the Lord is doing. Over a year and a half ago, we were privileged and uh, were able to launch the Pentecostal City Mission uh, Bible Institute, and we have been blessed over the last several years um, through um, the work of many we have seen the growth of a number of our believers and saints and this particular branch of ministry is establishing not just partnerships here but we were able to become affiliated with the Evangelical Training Association which is an international uh, ministry as well as the Mount Olive Bible College Seminary and we are concluding articulation with the Jamaica Theological Seminary here on the island. We are grateful for what the Lord is doing. So even in a pandemic, the church gave birth to something great. I wanna pause and just acknowledge and thank our general overseer, uh, Bishop Dr. Donald Maxwell for allowing this to uh, come to fruition and we thank God for you, sir, for your vision that the Lord will continue to graciously strengthen you and bless you. And we thank God for those of you who have really been praying for this branch of ministry. Thank you. In addition to what you're seeing here today, tonight, we also want to thank God and for Reverend uh, Jacqueline Grant and a number of you, the Sunday school uh, representatives, Deacon uh, Cecil Wade. I think wait is here. God bless you all. We launched, we also released this year our international Sunday school curriculum where we were able to try to align our Sunday school lessons internationally and be able to emphasize the work of the Holy Spirit um, from Genesis to Revelation. And we thank God for all of the writers and those of you who have thrown your hands in God richly bless you. These individuals have spent a year and a half in studies. Um, it is important to know that it is the word of God that's going to get us through. Um, we, if we don't emphasize the learning and the understanding of the word of God, we're going to leave ourselves vulnerable for the attack of the enemy. And note that even the devil was able to quote verses uh, when he encountered Jesus in the wilderness. But we're glad that Jesus beat him again. <laughs> Thanks be to God. So we need to continue to emphasize the word of God. I want to thank uh, Dr. Uh, Vithrell Searchwell from Los Angeles, Sister Natalia Searchwell, Sister Tanya Goff, and those who have labored behind the scenes to ensure that we have a reputable Bible Institute that uh, we can be proud of. Amen. So when our students are done, they can go to any college and be recognized for their labor. That's something I believe to praise God for. 
So right now, I just want to, um, since we've been released from the pandemic, I just want to just give a couple of folks their certificate that they've earned. It is the foundational ministerial um, certificate as well as the standard um, church ministry certificate, and they are still journeying, but we want to pause and recognize their commitment. They have taken more than eight courses that range from the doctrine, survey doctrine to New and Old Testament survey, Christian ethics, a whole litany of courses, and they have done well. I want you to help me celebrate them. In the Evangelical Training Association, this is to certify that these individuals have completed satisfactorily the four plus the other four required courses in church ministry preparation and is awarded this foundational church ministry certificate granted by the Pentecostal City Mission uh, Church Bible Institute. Help me just recognize these individuals as you come quickly. Um, I, I don't know everybody's title, so forgive me, and the certificates only have your name, but chop it up and call it love. Um, please note, uh, we don't mean no disrespect, but Velma Taylor Laidlaw, God bless you. Light Brigade Larice Taylor, I do know you. We want to honor the Lord tonight. Faith Scarlet is in Canada. God bless you. Light Brigade Paul Samuels in California. Patrick Laidlaw. God bless you. Light Brigade. Take your wives. God bless you both. Robert Downer. You would, yes, God bless you. Thank you. Very good. The assistant pastor, God bless you. Light, Reverend Monica Deacon, the Lord bless you. Yes. Tattoo Stuart Edwards. Lord bless you. Stacy Ann Morris. God bless you. God bless you. Keep it up. And Brother Janoy Graham. God bless you. Sister Diana Duncan, Toronto, Canada. Sister Simone Bailey. It doesn't stop there. They still continued in, in earning. And there's a cohort in the United Kingdom. I know they're out there watching the Lord bless you. Is the unique Richards here tonight? God bless your worker. You have the second certificate, which is the standard certificate, Light Brigade Larice Taylor. <laughs> Reverend Velita Cameron, that's in Rosedale. The Lord bless you. Woo. Desmond Williams. England. Brother Latimer, England. 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 All right. Second certificate, Simone Bailey.
bless you. Second standard certificate, Janoy Graham. Bless you again, sir. Keep up the good work. Second certificate, Stacy Ann Morris. The Lord bless you. Standard ministry certificate. They have worked hard. Come on, praise the Lord with them. Come on, the sister Tattoo Edwards, come on back. And Reverend Deacon, come on back. The Lord bless you. Reverend Light Brigade Downer, he's coming back. Please excuse me for reaching. Bless you. Sorry, come on back, Patrick Laidlaw. And, and if I forgot anybody, it's coming. God bless you. It's coming. Good looking out. Brother Kamar Richards. That's your husband. Come get his. Thank you. Congratulations. Come on back. Come on, come on. Come on back. Thank you so much. The rest you will hear to come. The Lord bless you. Thank you for this speech. Our certificate is in, in New York, but I want to recognize Light Brigade Joan Morgan. Where is she? Come on, praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Come on, put your hands up. that we are moving along as Jesus is leading the way. Amen. And soon and very soon we'll be launching some ministry in Kenya, in Africa. Amen. Amen. Already Bishop Johnson has volunteered to go on the soil of Kenya. Amen. Amen. I am yet to present a proposal to the uh, general overseer and the board of directors. And after that is done, I'm giving myself three months. Amen. To go through all, everything that needs to be done. Amen. And then for the launch of the ministry down in Kenya. Can you imagine, I heard, and I came in and I heard our late general overseer, Bishop Dr. Del Rose Walters, talk about launching a work in Africa. Did not done in her time, but in our time, God has opened the door. Amen. God has opened the door. And we have about four ministries down there. Amen. To launch is pretty soon. Amen. Put your hands together. Oh, the, the, the general overseer must feel good to know that during his tenure all of this is happening. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Everybody. Amen. At this time my God I'm so excited about the choir. The choir sound good you know man. Them look good in a man. God have mercy. Amen. Amen. I think they did a very good job and has done a very good job. Amen. In this convention. And they will be ministering to us now. Amen. And after they are through ministering, the next voice you will hear. 
Amen. To bring the curtain down is that of Reverend Dr. Stephen Strong. Amen. God richly bless you. International Choir.
your words go forth tonight with precision, with clarity, and with power. I pray that you, God, will let yourself be seen and you alone. We promise that you will get the glory and you will get the honor. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh God, my strength and my redeemer. Satan, you are dismissed in the name of Jesus. Grant us, God, heavenly strength and we promise to glorify you. Put your hands together for Jesus. Maybe I just need to say that again. Put your hands together for Jesus. All protocol has been observed tonight, but please help me. One more time, thank God for our general overseer. Uh, we thank God for you, Bishop. The Lord bless you. And you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to honor tonight each and every one of you. God bless you. To all of the saints, what a glorious time it has been in the presence of the Lord. Thank God for those of you who are um, watching online and sharing your sentiments. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. I learned at a young age preaching here the last night of convention is a very difficult time to preach. Um, I believe um, <laughs> some many, many years ago, I was assigned a Sunday night service. And by the time I prayed and opened my eyes, the church was empty. because the buses were on the out time to go. So I am promising you I'll get you out of here before midnight. Um, but um, I, I do believe that um, the Lord has a final word tonight. And I'm grateful. Convention is always a glorious time to come together. And I am glad. Well, at least in America, um, on Wednesday, they declared the pandemic over. I don't, I don't know what science metrics they're using, but um, they say it's over. But I thank God that the Lord kept me. Um, even in the pandemic, God kept me. And, and, and someone prayed and said, Stephen, coronavirus will not be your legacy. So when I contracted the virus, it was in the early season of the virus. And bodies were being piled up in hospitals and unidentified and and I was scared. But God touched me. God touched me. And spared my life. And for that I thank God and I praise him tonight. I will keep my introduction short tonight because time is on us and I want you to please understand that this particular theme 
that the Lord has given us has its we are just dealing with the preliminaries it will be to our benefit those of you those of us who are responsible for congregations and churches to go back to our various churches and continue to deconstruct this word that God has given the church the tragedy will be that it ends tonight and cannot end tonight because then this would have been a waste of time you know some people I know only came to see and be a part of what's going on but God had something more in store for us when we came um, we heard something we saw something we felt something and and I believe that it is God provoking us and God pushing us to understand that there is more to get there is more to get and 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 I and I hope that this does not please know I, I was saying to someone I was listening that after pandemic we're not trying to resuscitate the church we want a resurrection in the church because we cannot if we resuscitate it's gonna bring back to life what was already dead the old ways the old habits and the old behaviors but we want a resurrection we want a new man a new mindset and a new understanding turn your Bibles with me um, to Leviticus chapter 10 permit me Bishop Maxwell just to walk a little bit brother Rory don't tickle me yet walk a little bit from the theme text but I am going to stay in the theme and I'll be finished in a few minutes. Leviticus 10. Verse 1. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord which commanded them not and there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them and they died before the Lord You can jot these down or you can just look at them. Chapter 8 of the same book of Leviticus. There is a phrase I want you to take note of. Chapter 8 of Leviticus, verse 5, and the verse says, And Moses said unto the congregation, this is the thing which the Lord commanded to be done. Look at verse 17. The last phrase of the verse is, as the Lord commanded Moses. Verse 21 of the very same book, and it says, unto the Lord as the Lord commanded Moses. Verse 34 of the very same book says, And as he has done this day, so the Lord hath commanded him to do, to make an atonement. And if you push into chapter 9, 
the fifth verse. And they brought that which Moses commanded before the tabernacle of the congregation. And all the congregation drew near and stood before the Lord. And then my desired text. These two sons brought fire which the Lord did not command. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. Do not carry strange fire. If you look at the text that we have been talking about in 1st or in 2nd Timothy over the last seven, several days, verse 6 and a little bit of 7 says, For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands for the Spirit of God gave us. And I want you to note that in the text, the word us. Um, because if you miss that, you miss the the, 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 the crust of the message. Um, sometimes we are forced to recite scripture and it's inaccurate and we miss the essence of what God is saying. But Paul writes to Timothy and says, Timothy, what I have, you have. And that's critical because he reminds him in the early stages of the text that not just me alone, but your mother had it. And your grandmother had it. And the presbyters in chapter 4 of the first epistle and verse 14, he reminded him that when you were ordained, not just me alone, but all those that laid hands on you have it. So it is not exclusive to any individual what God gives us. All of us are common at the cross. And that's why it is important that we move out of hierarchy in the church. And remember that you and I all must kneel at the cross in order to receive what God has for us. And and in addition to that, be careful who lays hands on you. Because whatever they have, they have the capacity to impart that onto you. And then you end up carrying what they have deposited in your spirit. Paul, Paul says in a very profound way, he says, listen, Timothy, I want you to know what's in me is in you. Uh, the sixth and the seventh verse of our text has a lot to do with the initial encouragement, but it's really verse 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 that is the message that Paul wanted to pass on to Timothy while he was awaiting his demise. See, he, he wanted him to know that do not look at what's happening to me and cringe and become timid and become scared because that's just how the gospel works. And there is a sense of spiritual bitterness where people are now angry because of what they think their lives have become because of the ministry. You have to watch against that serpent because the ministry was never glorious. The ministry was never honorable. He was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquity and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. He was despised and 
he was rejected. And he was very acquainted. He was intimate with grief. So, so Timothy pastoring a church in Ephesus who, by the way, they sent him home and said, you're just 40 something years old and you are not ready to handle this congregation because you lack experience, you lack gravity, you don't look like Paul, you don't sound like Paul, you don't preach like Paul. It's time for you to go back to your house and wait a couple more mango seasons. And Timothy picks up his pen and he writes to his mentor and said, well, of all the mission fields you could have sent me to, why did you send me to Ephesus? And in the midst of that, you are sitting in a cold cell waiting to be beheaded for the gospel. So, um, the gospel. You can read it down in the verses. Paul says, listen, I am not ashamed of this gospel. He, he was letting him know that in spite of the fact that it has brought me to this place, I am not ashamed of it because I know it is the power of God unto salvation. And, and listen to me, Pete, listen to me, Timothy. It will be glorious today, but it will probably land you in the same cold cell. But just know that you don't have to be ashamed if your shoes has a hole in it. You don't have to be ashamed if you don't have the latest style because the Lord is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. So we can try to, 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 to formulate this text to be a text for sinners and a text for the unsaved but it really isn't it is it is it, it, it is a it is a story a, an epistle a letter written to the head of the church because at the highest seat of the church there was a spirit of timidness cowardice and fear now mind you the, the text sets us up and says look their days are coming when men should be lovers of their own selves. You heard the bishop today. This, we're in that time. We're here right now. And what's happening today, at least in America, there is a movement to make the church inessential. Making us no longer relevant. And the leader is scared. Timothy. He says, I'm not doing that. This may land me in prison. And it might cost me my head. You have to make a decision. Tonight, tonight, not tomorrow night. Are you going to carry the gospel or not not city mission not Baptist but are you going to carry the gospel are you going to ensure that the gospel remains relevant in a society that wants to lock down the church who would have known that government in five days could lock the doors of the church? I, we used to read and think to ourselves as young people, it's very impossible for the entire world to take the mark of the beast. How are they going to do that? And I saw 
in December, January, February, within days, millions of people, I'm not saying the vaccine is the mark of the beast, but I am saying the capability to move in that direction already exists. I read an article last week, Bishop, that says, this generation will be better than the last because we will raise our children in the absence of God. That's in America. The, there, there is a move to ensure that we become irrelevant and no longer essential. If you can silence the gospel, you can destroy the church because it took the foolishness of preaching the gospel to save the world. So I've listened and I hear you and I join you too and say, Lord, fan the flame. Fan the flame. But I want you to know if I can just encourage somebody tonight, the flame never died. It's still hot. The flame is not dead. The reflection of God's power is to be in me. It is to be in you. It is to be in our children. It is to be in our families. And Paul mentions the gift here. He says, fan into flame the gift of God. And then he immediately talks about the spirit. And so we can relate to this scripture to the many gifts that we have in the Lord. But ultimately, the only thing Paul wanted to emphasize is ensure that the Spirit of God stays in the church. Speaking in tongues will cease. Prophecy will cease. And every one of us have diverse gifts. Some preach, some teach, but nothing is more important than you having the Spirit of God in your life. And what we are doing is competing one with the other about individual gifts and we have stopped preaching about the necessity of the Spirit of God in our lives. So, we don't preach the Holy Ghost. We don't emphasize the infilling of the Holy Ghost. It has become silent. We want gifts. Paul did not say stir up tongues. He did not say stir up prophecy. The gift singular of God who is the spirit of God. Now the spirit of God comes with gifts and he gives as he pleases. But the question becomes, do you have the spirit of God in you? And then he goes on and he says, for God has not given us the spirit, shout spirit, shout spirit, shout spirit of fear. Comparison to the spirit of God. Say God. Just let me teach for five more minutes. So, as long as you have the Spirit of God, there is no space 
for the spirit of fear. Because where the spirit of God abides, there is power, love, and self-discipline. Are you with me? So, so, so now you have, you have this debate that whether or not the spirit is in cessation or not. And there are people who believe that the spirit bishop, yes, no longer utilizes or deposit gifts in people because that was for the establishment of the church. But we who are Pentecostal, we know that the spirit of God is still alive. Hold it. I'm coming. Alive and well. Say neighbor, neighbor. I have the spirit. Don't lie. I have the spirit of God. Woo. So, because we possess the spirit of God, Paul says, we have, we, you and I, for there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And we've all been baptized in him. So the same spirit that Bishop Gale has from God, I have. The same spirit from God that Brother Rory has, I have. Hi, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, Paul, he mentions the gift here. Fan into flame the gift of God. Because you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And on the day of Pentecost, when they were gathered in one room, and on one accord, and having all things in common, there was a sound of a mighty rushing wind, and from heaven, and the Spirit of God came and sat upon them with clothing tongues of fire. So when he came, he came with fire so there that's essential this reminds us and just so you have some understanding of how the priests of old that we read in the Old Testament in the times of Israel how the priests used to keep the flame on the altar in the temple see in the temple Bishop Hart but in the temple of the Lord, the Lord commanded his priests. He literally told the priests, the fire shall always be burning. Did you hear me? It must not go out. The only responsibility the Levitical priesthood had was to make sure So it concerns me when I hear the saints talking that the fire has gone out. I, listen, I don't think I'm, I, I, I'm, I want to provoke you, you know, because I hear you. I'm human. We all are human. But how does your humanity size up with the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost gives us strength in the time of weakness. So, so the priest's responsibility, and you can read it, was to ensure that the fire on the altar of God never goes out. <laughs> it 
when, if the fire went out, they would have disobeyed God's command. My responsibility is to ensure that the fire never goes out. If we come back here next year and say, fan the flame, and I hear someone saying, my fire has gone out. Something is going to bother my spirit. Because as long as we believe the spirit is alive and well, the fire of God who is a consuming fire can never go out. In our tongue lies life and death. Hmm. So they had to keep the spirit alive and moving. This reminds me that the fire on the altar, if it goes out, then the presence of God is not in our midst. Because the fire represented the presence of God. The fire on the altar was a reflection that God's power was moving. It was a reflection of what he has been doing in his people. If there is no fire, there is no deliverance. If there is no fire, there is no breakthrough. If there is no fire, there is no healing. So we have to ask ourselves today, what is it that we burn for on the inside? What consumes our mind? What are we burning for? What do we wake up for every day thinking on having such a passion for? Is it for the Lord Jesus? Is it for the world? Is it for the Lord to wear? You, Lord, give me my house, my, give me my education. Give me, give me, give me, give me. And now we have stagnant prayers. We have cold worship. We have dormant churches. And the society is saying, make them irrelevant. Their gospel does not matter. Their gospel is a lie. They're foolish traditional keepers. But I have come tonight to tell the devil he is a liar. The church triumphant. Uh -huh. See, there were days when I would preach and I could walk on the benches. I was about 50 pounds lighter. But I've come with the same spirit to let the devil know that Satan Mission Church is alive and well because the Holy Ghost is still in the church. I am not here to be nostalgic and sit here and try to be politically correct sometimes you have to stand up for your church because it represents the gospel that you believe and the church triumphant is alive and well so, oh, as I was preparing the text, I said, Lord, help me. Because preaching to me is not something I run towards. But I recognize the call on my life. And in prayer, the Lord said, Stephen, tell them, watch out for strange fire. There were two elements in the temple or in the tabernacle. 
I have your censer. The censer was the element that carried the incense. And after you took coal off of the altar of God and put it inside the vessel, you were to add the incense and it will create a smoke. And the smoke will blind the priests from looking too far into the holy of holies. So the smoke was to ensure that when they went into worship, they did not get distracted. If we have leaders that do not know how to worship, the people are going to become distracted. If you have praise and worship leaders who have never been in the presence of God, they cannot take us where they have never been. If you have musicians who are not anointed to play Zamar skillfully, they might release a sound in the atmosphere that will cause a distraction in worship. The Lord says, Stephen, make sure you remind yourself, me, that I have become no longer holding the censer from the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, I have become oh, she, the censer of God. And he has placed in me the Spirit of God in this censer. And whatever I put in this vessel has to come off the altar. It cannot come from strange places. I close my Bible, I'm done. Whatever you put in your vessel has to come off of God's altar. And be careful here that we're not vessels carrying strange fire. Aaron had two sons. They joined the priesthood with him. I read chapter 7, 8, 9, and 10. And consistently, Bishop, the Bible said, and they did as the Lord commanded. And they did as the Lord commanded. And they did as the Lord commanded. And then we run into chapter 10. And Aaron's two sons said, at the end of chapter 9, there was a glorious, glorious meeting. You can read it yourself. It was as if convention. The roof was ripped off. And the glory of God filled the room. And the Bible said, all of a sudden, the people fell down and gave glory to God. Now, there were two sons that Aaron had that had a spirit, it seems like. of covetousness or a desire to recreate something or to manufacture something that was not spiritually authentic. Because what they wanted to do was have a repeat of chapter 9. The revival that broke but can i tell you tell somebody god will do a new thing i don't need 1930 revival i need a new thing and and bishop the bible said these two 
Levites. Did you hear who they were? They were to who? Who was trained by Moses. Who watched their father. Who knew what to do. You could not blame ignorance, not yet. You could not blame naivety. They knew better. They weren't just human. They were a part of the Levitical priesthood. And the Bible said they took profane, strange, unauthorized fire, put it in the censer, added their own incense, took it to God's altar. And the Bible said, instead of them offering the fire, mom, fire came off of the altar and consumed both of them. Now, watch humanity. Bishop, the Bible says, Aaron witnessed the death of his two sons. You can read it. You can read it. Put it on the screen. I'm almost done. Please. Verse 2. Go to verse 2 quick of Leviticus chapter 10. And watch what happens in the text. Aaron witnesses this. Moses witnessed this. And all the people witnesses this. And the Bible says, And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them and they did what died before God go to the next verse quick quick I only got five more minutes and then Moses said to daddy this is it that the Lord spake saying I will be sanctified in them that come close to me and before all of the people I will be what? Watch what daddy did. Aaron had to remain silent because Aaron knew something had gone radically wrong. Somehow. Lord, help me. Somehow, somewhere in the process, in the protocol, in the established routine, somewhere in the order of the house, Somebody got presumptuous and said, I can worship God like I feel like. I can come like I want. It doesn't take all of that. But the devil is a liar. Some things you cannot change. Some things you cannot compromise. Some things you have to leave it like you found it. Because if God wanted our opinions or our ideas, he would have asked for it. But when it comes to worshiping God, you have to worship him like he wants to be worshipped. 
you have to praise him like he wants to be praised and what is happening not in this church but in some churches we are becoming demigods trying to become somebody to be praised and, and lifted up but God has already constructed how he wants to be worshipped God has already laid the foundation and he has already told you let the church be the church for upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell the problem is the lack of ability to discern spirits and if you do not exercise the spirit of discernment you will be sitting next to strange fire and wondering why the worship is cold wondering why we can't get revival wondering why no one's being delivered because we have strange fire on the choir lord jesus strange fire on the usher board strange fire in the musicians strange fire preaching from the pulpit satire but I have come to say Lord throw water on every strange fire in the house tonight you have to know if there is strange fire in your prayer group you have to know if there's strange fire on the usher board and, and in the clerical department. You have to every now and then, pastors, uh, come on, touch your neighbor, say you are, the, you are Levite, you are Levite. You don't believe it, right? You don't believe it. Peter wrote it and he said, he said, we are a royal. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. No, open your mouth, open your convention mouth and say, neighbor, you are a priest. I don't care if you don't hold no title. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, you are a priest. If you play the drums, you're a priest. <laughs> if you play the keyboards, you're a priest. If you bring the water, you're a priest. I feel a preach now. And God has come to convention. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you are censor. And the spirit of God is in you. And when you go back to Portland, we're carrying no strange fire. When we go back to Westmoreland, we're carrying no strange fire. On the bus, no strange fire. In the car, no strange fire. As God said it, that's how we will do it. Say, neighbor, put it out. So, so, so Paul says to Timothy, you are a vessel. You are a sensor. Take your fire off of God's altar. And, and your incense is your prayer. You can read it in the scripture. The Bible says our, our prayers, our praise goes up and it is an incense in the nostrils of God so so there's no more tabernacle there's no more altar 
we have become the vessel that carries the fire and every time we open our mouth it burns an aroma that goes up to God's nostrils and God responds with power he responds with anointing and I have come to tell somebody if you praise him the fire will burn if you praise him things will happen in your life if you praise him you'll begin to experience deliverance if you praise him somehow the fire your praise connects to the Holy Ghost and God says look at my child praising me if you have a need I'll make a way because I'm a way maker for those that carry the spirit I'm a problem solver for those that carry the spirit slap your neighbor say wake up man wake up wake up wake up we have come in the power of the Holy Ghost to water the light brigade water the reverence water the workers water the volunteers water this one that one that one put out every strange fire that the Holy Ghost can burn watch 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 those discipline your ear watch with you for God has not given us a spirit of fear shout strange fire fear is strange fire if you're scared you have strange fire if you're sitting on your calling strange fire if you're backbiting strange fire if you're gossiping strange fire and when you come in here we now have to work hard we have to preach hard because too much strange fire but since God has been merciful he did not kill me because I need you to know doubt is not on the altar fear is not on the altar what's on the altar power say power dunamis dunamis power you heard these prolific preachers already dunamis power that means if you're sitting next to a sick you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover because you have power you shall pick up serpents and they shall not harm you you shall eat poison and it will not kill you there are a couple people here today the doctor said you're at stage 4 cancer but I've come to tell you that God can heal cancer I wish there was a witness in the room because if you start to praise God over here fire will catch over here if you praise God over here fire will catch over here if you praise God over here fire will go down and there will be a smoke in the house touch your neighbor say this vessel carries no strange come on say this vessel carries no strange we used to 
sing a song that says sons of God arise sons of God arise from the ends of the earth arise fire in my hands fire in my mouth fire in my feet say neighbor you're sitting next to fire about fire that comes from Obia man I'm not talking about voodoo shoodoo or hoodoo I'm talking about the Holy Ghost fire so the Lord said water it's water if the Lord said water and blood is water and blood if the Lord said it's seal inside seal inside if the Lord said this do that do what the Lord has said so I'm always intrigued by Jamaica Every time I come here, I'm always intrigued. I recognize that the Minister of Culture Activities, Minister Grange, she gave a speech recently and she announced the theme for the 60th and it's a reignite a nation to greatness. And as I was sitting in my hotel room, God says, see? I never destroy a nation without a warning. The word itself, reignite, come on you teachers, suggests that the fire has gone out. Whether they mean it or not, the word says reignite. I said, no, no, the church can't be talking about reigniting when the nation is trying to reignite. Because the nation now is coming somewhere to get the fire. Oh, maybe you don't get it. You don't get it. What can cause fire? What causes fire? Fire. Fire. We can debate it. Flame causes fire. Fire begets fire. So the world at some point, the nation of Jamaica is going to look for someone to reignite the nation on fire. Let me take my seat. In 1961, four individuals submitted with the other hundreds a national anthem and a pledge to be selected by the government as you were pursuing your independence. There was a preacher his name was Father Sherlock, who said, let me take these lyrics and turn them into a prayer. And it was submitted. So I revisited 
your pledge. And it says, before God and all mankind, I pledge to love and loyalty of my heart, the wisdom and courage shall courage of my mind. I promise to stand up for justice, brotherhood, peace, to work, and God, I feel like there's some patriots in the room, to think generously and to think honestly. So, Jamaica, may how do what increase how and what else and what else and play her part in advancing the human race that almost sounds like a church shout fire oh jesus is there anybody here and then someone got on their knees and said eternal father bless our land guide us with thy mighty hand keep us free Say neighbor, keep the fire burning. Keep the fire burning. Keep the fire burning. Keep us free from evil powers. There is no way demonic powers can infiltrate the house of God. And we sit down cold. We've got bouncer hoory for a reason. We've got power for a reason. Wake up, watchmen. Be our light through countless hours to our leaders. Great defender, grant true wisdom from above. I wish somebody would help me here. Say the church has to pray. Pray for Mr. Holness. Pray for Parliament. Pray for Libertarian. Pray for PLP. Pray for Trump. Pray for Biden. Pray for America. Justice, truth, be ours forever, Jamaica. And then he prayed some more. He said, teach us true and respect. Say fan, 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 stir our response for our duties call. Fanning only means build a church. Fanning only means set the revival. Stand the Bakusanda. Fanning means move ahead with the agenda. Fanning means Pick up your responsibility. Fanning means walk in your purpose.
Now look at each other. Look at each other. And start repeat the last few words. Speak it into your neighbor. Strengthen us. Come on, talk to me. Just come on, talk to this one. Talk to that one. Strengthen us. The weak. To cherish. Talk to someone. Knowledge sent us. Heavenly Father. Grant true wisdom from above. Grant true wisdom. Say justice. That means I gotta love you. I gotta love someone. I gotta love my neighbor. I gotta lift up my neighbor. I gotta encourage my neighbor. For the next 30 seconds, I want you to praise God. But hold on. With this understanding, when I praise God now, everything everything Bishop the Bible says in Isaiah I think 42 verse 3 the bruise read he would not cast away and the smoldering wick he would not put out and then Jesus picks it up in Matthew 12, somewhere 10, and repeats the very same word. The reed is a wheat. Its purpose was to sustain others. Bruise, in this translation, is the wrong interpretation. Because bruise suggests if I'm bruised, yes. it's not a real hurt. But really, in Hebrew, the word means crush. That means beyond the skin, the reed has been bruised and damaged. But Jesus said, I won't cast it aside. Some people here tonight, not, you know, you don't got to tell nobody, but you've endured some bruises that nobody can see. It's so deep. It's so deep that you have perfected the art of masking it. You know, Bruce, people can preach. But God is saying, I see that you're crushed. But I want the crush because I can replenish. I can heal. Woo. And this is what I love. And though your wick may just be light, I will fan it into flame. Pastor. I hope I don't ruin the end of the convention. But we don't have the ability to fan no flame. When we get into the presence of God, God will send a wind. And he will fan it himself. Woo! So this time, this time, when you praise God, in your hurt, when you praise God in your disappointment, when you praise God in your setback, when you praise God in your delay, There will be a fire. 
that's about to storm. Listen here. Some of us have been carrying some stuff. Anybody want deliverance tonight? Praise has nothing to do but how loud you are. I was telling somebody, I don't see no tears. I don't see no brokenness. But I want some real people here who know that you know that you know. You have to even look at those who did it to you. And for the next 30 seconds, we say, God, thank you for putting out the strange fire. And thank you for fanning the fire. Woo! I had some malice, throw water on it. I had a little bit of hurt, throw water on it. I had some jealousy water. And this time when I praise you, it's coming off the altar. I present my body, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. I declare and decree the praise and worship team is about to get another increase. Holy Ghost, touch the musician's fingers as they release a sound in this atmosphere. And I don't even care if everybody don't praise God. I just want two of you that really want deliverance, that really want a breakthrough, that really want a breakthrough that's tired of being tired that wants an increase you don't even have to wait you can start praising Praise him online. Praise him online. Come on, push him.
person. I don't care what the prognosis is. Fire! given us silver and gold have I none but such as I have I, my God help me here, you have something to give. This sickness that came to kill you, God has lended you more days. Hezekiah, receive your deliverance. Let the church say yes. No. 
Mama Kutulu Anda la Bakushi Hasheke da la Bakushi Yeah Though you walk Through the valley Of the shadow of death Fear no evil But thou art with you Burn up every snare Rebirth, rebirth. Let the church say yes. and it's in their right hand I see God taking us up in his right hand and the atmosphere has just changed If you know what I know, you'll praise him right now. Your house is about to be delivered. Your children are about to be saved. needs to be filled with the Holy Ghost.
there are some volunteers work a light brigade when you need the Holy Ghost. Have you been filled since you believe? five of you that needs the infilling of the Holy Ghost come quickly yeah yeah yes Lord don't kneel down yet lift up your hands say yes say yes Are you coming? Are you coming? Come on, come on, don't be afraid. God has not given you the spirit of fear. Come quickly, come quickly. Marco Sunday, I clear the path, I burn the fear. I said, walk to me, walk to me, walk to me, walk to me. I need firebrand people to lift your hand and say, yeah. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Yeah. Fire Pentecost.
when the prophet declares something I'm not here to tell you that you're about to get a new car it's not what the Lord said but there's a word from heaven tonight it's about to get difficult it's hard already it's about to get difficult but I hear the Lord letting you know his grace is sufficient it will not kill you God is going to take you through it What seemed like a loss, it's a gain because God closed the right doors. Had you walked through that door, it would have cost you your life, but He spared you and He's going to make a way for you. Don't stop praying. Don't stop believing. God don't want nothing from you but your praise. Do you believe that? We're going to praise God with her. And as you praise him, strength coming. As you praise him, strength is coming. As you're praising strength. Come on, help me praise God with you. Let the church praise him in the air. You're at the right place at the right time. You're at the right place at the right time. Fire, 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 fire. Woo! Let the people praise him. Let the people praise him. Let the people praise him. all over the the premises all over this church 
Just go ahead and start giving God a prayer of thanksgiving. I want everybody praying. I want everybody praying. Everybody's praying. Everybody's praying. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, intercessors. Come on, intercessors. I hear you clapping, but I want to hear you praising him with them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just shake three people's hand and tell them, take this fire. Come on, say, take this fire home with you. Marcus Come on, shake two more hands and say, take it with you. Come on, shake that hand and say, take the fight. Come on, wherever you are, shake some more hands and say, take it with you. Take it with you. Come on, somebody, say, take it with you.
your hands to the man of God tonight and just declare blessings over his life and over his family. Come on right where you are, just declare blessings. We, we declare that he's going out and he's coming in. His tour baskets is, come on, come on, just declare a blessing over his life. Hallelujah. As he poured into us, may the Holy Spirit pour back into him. May the fire continue to burn. Sit on him, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. It doesn't end here. Say neighbor. It doesn't end here. I believe that it is appropriate for our leader to pronounce a blessing over us as we get ready to go back across the seas, go back to different fields. The word tonight, the potent word, has come. And I'm sure we are challenged. You got it. Yes. You have been hearing from the, it is in you. Every one of us has. Let's touch yourself and say, I've got it. Hallelujah. Let's you want a Korea Let's you ever so to rule. Let's you want to remind yourself, touch yourself, and say, I have got it. Mm. Look to your neighbor and say, Neighbor, you got it too. So if you have it and I have it, when we come together, Pentecostal City Mission can never, the kingdom of God can never be the same. Stand to your feet to receive the blessing of our general overseer as we get ready to dismiss. these days of victory these days of blessings and thank God we know that God has given us something powerful he has given us the spirit of power and we have got it come on we have got it amen the spirit of love and we are well disciplined amen we're going to go from here with this fire burning praise God in our spirit let us pray Eternal Father, our God, how we thank you. We thank you for your children who have come from near and from far. And God, there are many about to be traveling back to where they came from. But we put them in your hand on tonight. Your hand is not short, neither is your heavy. You said, if my people were called by my name, 
would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways you would hear from heaven forgive sins and heal lands and so we thank you for healing tonight we thank you for deliverance tonight we thank you for victory tonight we thank you father god for what you have given us for these days almighty god we're in the last days and we are seeing perilous times but we thank you that your holy ghost is in us and we cannot go under i pray for impartation of your blessing upon everyone they'll take it to their family to their churches my god to their cities where they are from and the glory of god will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea bless this ministry bless our leaders bless our pastors in whatever capacity they hold bless our singers bless our prayer warriors bless everyone lord god in ministry and let your divine will be done in our lives we honor you we thank you for this victory and we call it done in jesus name in jesus name we will sing all hail the power of jesus name let the angels are straight forth Jesus Christ of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ with passive knowledge that he might be filled with all the fullness of God now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end and the church of God say amen, amen. say amen again amen. amen and amen praise the mighty name of the Lord the Lord bless thee and keep thee the Lord make his face the sign upon thee and be gracious unto thee and give thee peace. In the name of Jesus, we declare this and we call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. What I say unto one, I say unto all, watch, fight, and pray. What I say unto one, I say unto all, watch pray fight come on in the holy ghost what i say unto one i say unto all watch fight and pray in jesus name clap your hands and give god that royal praise hallelujah hallelujah the vote of thanks has already been done the lord bless you Worship team, musicians, we go out with that song. The Lord bless you, Lord keep you. Yes. Bless you.